Well, we got a really nice, glassy, calm conditions today. I don't know if you can tell by the video. I'm still inside the harbor, but man, it's super calm. There's like almost no wind. Really, I think the swell, we got a little bit of a swell coming through, but for the most part, I think it's gonna be pretty good weather today. And today, we're gonna be looking for first a little bit of live bait, and then hopefully, we'll catch some lingcod after that with that live bait. And then finally, after that, we're hoping to get on some salmon. But before all that, I'd like to thank Mystery Tackle Box for being the sponsor of this video. And as you've seen in previous Mystery Tackle Box videos, I'm gonna take the baits that I got in this box and hopefully turn them into some big fish. Usually take all the baits, see if I can catch a fish on all of them. That's kind of like the standard Mystery Tackle Box video for me. But today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. First off, let's show you what's in here. So first things first, there's a little swim bait here. It's like a little sand dab swim bait, which is actually pretty interesting. I feel like that could work here because lingcod definitely will eat this. Um, what else do we have here? This is something that we get in a lot of the boxes. It's like a little jerk bait, Yozuri jerk bait. This is a floating one, dives down, uh, I don't know how deep, probably not that deep, like maybe three feet or so. But these are like really good all around baits for like pretty much any predatory fish. There's a spoon, Owl's Goldfish spoon. Also a very good all around bait. What else do we have? A little underspin. It's like a purple pinkish little shine to it. We got some swim baits, green and uh, cream, or I don't know what color, they have a color on here. No, there's no color. I don't know. Like a dirty orange and green flake color. And then the last but not least, and this is what I'm gonna focus on today, is this right here. This is a little sabiki from Eagle Claw. Um, so if you're not familiar with sabikis, basically they're meant for catching bait. It says right there, bait rig. And they got anywhere from like four to six hooks on them, usually pretty small hooks because you're trying to catch bait fish. Um, and these, I don't know what size hooks are, but you can see them there. It's actually a little bit larger than what I normally use for these waters, but this will work for sure. So what the idea is, you got six hooks on there. So once you get in a school of bait fish, you can pick off bait fairly quickly. So let me get this set up a rod, just to show you what it looks like before we even get out there. I just have regular, this 30 pound mono main line, just tied to a little snap swivel there, nothing fancy. And then if we take this out, there's one side that has, so on this little jig here, there's one side that has a snap swivel and one side that has a non-snap swivel, just a regular barrel swivel. So I'm gonna take the regular barrel swivel side and tie that onto my snap swivel, like that. So then if you take it out one hook by one hook, try your best not to tangle it up. That's the hardest thing with the these bait jigs or sabiki rigs. Because there's so many hooks, it's very easy to get tangled up, but put that in there for now. If you pull it off slowly, keep everything somewhat organized. There you go. And then all it, I'm left with now at the bottom is this snap swivel. So I take that and put, like I said, it's just depending on what rod you're using. This is a two ounce teardrop sinker. Just put it on the bottom like that. So now what we have is, this one has five hooks. So we got five hooks up and down the line. I don't know if that's all gonna be in the frame, but just trust me with the little weight at the bottom. It's kind of like, uh, like a dropper loop, but with five hooks on them. Like a five hook dropper loop, I guess you'd call it. And then each one of these little hooks, you know, different sabikis will look different, but most of them have like a little bit of flash. So this one has some little sparkle there. I don't know if the GoPro's picking that up or not, but with a little, it's kind of like a little shrimp or maybe a little bait fish imitation. I think it's a little shrimp imitation. So if you can see that right there. That's what we're looking at. We're in, still in the harbor, like I was saying, so we're gonna paddle out, try to find a little school of bait fish and see what we can catch here to use for the big fish. Guys, it's all going right there. 
Okay, so oh, there we go. Right away. Ooh, these are pretty big baits. Alright, there's a couple. These are jack smelt. They're not the most favorite bait of anyone's preference, but they definitely work. Um, actually, my my last video, maybe two videos ago, I caught some good lingcod on these very same jack smelt here. I'm gonna put this in here. That's a pretty big one to be honest, but if you've seen any of my videos and seen anything with lingcod, those guys will eat, I'm gonna let this one go. Those guys will eat anything that they can fit in their mouth. So you might say there's no such thing as a bait that's too big. But let me see if I can get one that's a little bit, if I can get one that's a little bit smaller, that would be ideal. There we go. Oh, that, that one's even bigger. So there's a couple of ways that I like to work this sabiki. One is just drop it back while I'm moving kind of like troll it basically near the surface a lot of times that's where most bait fish actually will hang out um, especially these smelt are always right next to the surface maybe like 10 feet down so five to maybe 15 feet down somewhere in that range um, the other way is to just stop on a bait ball and jig it up and down both of those tactics those are pretty much the two main tactics that i'll use to catch speak or to catch bait with this sabiki it's pretty simple you just gotta get out here and just try it. Go Shia. All right, well, seems like last. the big smelts are the only ones okay. that I can get. So this is what we're gonna use today. Big bait, Shia. hopefully for a big fish. We got a couple of them here. Can't really keep more than that alive in there anyways. So we're gonna take these out to the reef, drop them down against the rocks, See if there's any big lingcod right there waiting or halibut you know other fish will definitely eat smelt too shark whatever so see you out there all right we've made it out to the reef so here's what we got here a little live bait setup that's a sliding five ounce weight and then our leader to a couple of octopus hooks you could use a treble on the end here if you wanted to but i'm gonna go with two single hooks and the benefit of the single hook is it'll keep your bait alive a little bit longer the downside is you're a little bit less likely to hook the fish big fish when they eat it um, but that's just what we're going with for now and I'm gonna take one of these big smelt that I got here ah, it's a big bait put that one there all right there it is live smelt going down so I'm gonna get this as close as I can to the reef without bouncing on the reef because I don't wanna get hung up, but I do wanna get close enough to where if there's a lingcod sitting on the rock down there, he sees my bait and he'll come up and get it. So send it down, see what happens. Adam, I'm catching these lobster bait. Good one. That's a fish. Thought I was snagged for a second. Well, that's a link card. Oh man, probably a good one. Saw that bait I was using. Okay. Wow. Well, I thought that was a snag for a second. So I wasn't really, didn't really set the hook that well, but I think it worked. Got him. Oh, look at that. Get him take off. Yeah, I think this is a good one. You saw that bait I was using. Big, big smelt. But like I said at the beginning, these lingcod, man, they'll eat anything they can get in their mouth. Oh yeah, oh, I can see him on the fish finder. Oh, there he goes. Saw the kayak. You saw the kayak. Okay. Saw the kayak and he didn't like it. All right, 
Yeah, he's right here. Well, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Here he goes again. It's a good one. I saw him. He's a good one. Wow, this water's pretty clear. Oh, yeah. That's a nice fish. Head in the net. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. There he goes. All right, we got him. Whoo! Man, that's been a tough bite. I uh, been drifting around these these smelt for. I don't know, probably a couple hours already without any bites for the most part. But finally got one. It's a good one. Probably like 20, 28 inches or so. Wow, look at that. Look at that mouth. I always say this with lingcod, but you really have to check your leader. These guys have really sharp teeth and they will fray up your leader. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the GoPro there, but. That's pretty frayed up, so I'm gonna retie this. Before I even do anything, I'm gonna get my line back in, and then I'll show you this fish. There you go. There's our first ling cod. A, definitely a solid one, and not, not a huge but definitely a keeper. I'd say he's probably about 28 inches. I'll guess, I'm gonna guess 27. Let's, let's put the official measurement on him. Let's see how close I am. I just caught one in my last video. I think that was 20, 28 or 29. I think this one's a touch shorter than that one. Yep, ooh, a little bit. I guess overestimated by a quarter of an inch. It's 26 and three quarters. Pretty dang close. Right as this fog is coming in. But that's a nice one right there. Now if you saw this fish and you saw my bait, you probably wouldn't think that this fish would eat a smelt of that size. Um, but like I said, these guys are super, super aggressive if you've never seen them before. Big, big teeth. And they'll eat anything that swims by. And honestly, I think a lot of times they're just biting it almost out of anger. Oh, the boat's coming in hot. They saw me. Hold up. Gotta make sure I don't capsize. Shoot. Gotta hit this wake head on. Okay. So anyways, what I was saying is, honestly, I think a lot of times these guys are just biting it almost to just defend their territory. They're not even really biting it to try and eat it. Um, either way, we got them. A lot of times they'll just hold on to the bait, grab onto it, and like you think you've got them hooked, but you actually don't. You're, they're just holding onto the bait. They'll actually hold on all the way up to the surface sometimes and then just let it go and swim back down. So uh, definitely interesting fish, but there's the first one right there. Limit on these is two, minimum size, 22 inches, so I can catch one more. If I catch one more, I'll go ahead and keep it and then uh, We'll start trolling for salmon because uh, you might have seen on the way out there was a bunch of boats trolling for salmon. I know they're catching some in there, so I'd like to give it a shot. But first, we're gonna try and get our second link cod uh, before we do that. There we go. Got him. Got him again. Right in the same spot. Oh, there he goes. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a confused ling cod. Barely got him. All right. That's number two. All right, guys, look at this. Barely got him just by the skin of his teeth. Right on the lip. 
skin hook. Actually, I'm gonna measure him first. This one is borderline, so I wanna make sure he's a keeper before I mess him up too bad. Keeper? Yeah, this keeper. 23. Not huge, but it's a good yeah, eater. Yeah. Looks tiny. It's a good eater. <laughs> this hook. Oh. Yeah, I got him right on the lip, but that was like a hard, hard part of the lip in there. Okay, so there's our two fish right there. One, nah, it's kind of small, but honestly, the smaller ones, the meat quality is a lot better. They're more tender. They just taste better. And then that's my, the first one, definitely a bigger one. One of my goals for this season is to catch a 20 pounder. Now, these two combined probably are only like, I don't know, 15 pounds maybe, maybe not even that. But um, yeah, towards the end of the season, we're gonna try and go some, hunt some big, big lingcod. But for now, I'm gonna take care of these two, walk them and bleed them. And then uh, we're gonna troll for some salmon because like I was saying earlier, I saw a bunch of boats trolling for salmon right in here. And other catches, so I saw one boat catch one. Um, I think it's kind of slow, but we're gonna at least try it, put our time in and see if we can get one or two. I don't think wearing white is a good idea when I'm fishing. I probably don't need these anymore. It's kind of foggy out here. Here's the setup for salmon trolling. I got this little watermelon apex. Basically, it's a little, just a little flashy lure. Chrome on one side, and then it's got, I don't know how else to describe it, but a watermelon color on the other side. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but the salmon seem to like this color. So I have a little portable downrigger right here. Basically what this is, or not portable, I don't know, kayak downrigger. It's a mini, mini downrigger, there we go. Um, so basically what this is gonna do, it's a four pound weight, and this is gonna enable me to control the depth at which I'm trolling. So I'm gonna clip this on, there's a little clothespin like thing here. So I clip my line on, as you can imagine, it's back there. Clip the line on, control the depth, and then when a fish hits it, it will pull the line out of this little clip here, and then boom, I'm just fighting the fish in without any other excess weight. That's why I like the downrigger so much. There's a few other ways to do it, but this is my preferred method. So, like I said, we're gonna troll back towards the harbor. That's where all the boats were when I was coming out. So, we'll see. If we're lucky enough, we can get lingcod and salmon, but we'll see. I think this salmon bite is kind of tough right now, but we're gonna at least give it a shot. Well, no luck on the salmon, but we'll be back. We got about a month left in salmon season, so I'm still holding out for at least one more fish. Um, but hopefully you learned a little bit about live baiting, sabiking, using that to catch uh, bigger fish. Um, if you wanted to get a mystery tackle box for yourself, this is the inshore saltwater box. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to go check one out for yourself. I got a lot of different live bait videos on my channel. Um, I've used like live octopus, live eels, different kinds of fish, all kinds of different stuff. So if you're interested in those, check them out. So once again, thank you guys for watching and thank you to Mr. Tack Box for letting me bring content like this to you guys at home or on your phone or wherever you're watching from. But appreciate you guys' view and we'll see you next time.